When it came to this commission, what was interesting for me was the minute I walked in here, I mean, when I saw the space last year, then there was scaffolding everywhere and I couldn't really get a sense of what the whole space would be. But the minute I saw this wall, I was like, I just, I knew I had to do something with one of the walls because there was something about the height of it and the size of it that is both intimidating and very exciting. So the work, basically what's behind me right now is part of the work. So this is the wall drawing and on top of this is then a seven channel video projection. But for this, what was interesting is so the work kind of existed before. It had a life before, if you like. It was actually conceived in 2012 when I started interviewing amateur astronomers in Delhi. And the project basically involved, you know, trying to understand why these groups of people do what they do, what draws them to the night sky, and as a way of trying, you know, also as a way of understanding why I do it, because I'm also an amateur astronomer. So out of the interviews came you know, various sort of highlights that popped up through the context of the conversations. And one of them were a few, you know, one site in particular, which the amateurs keep kept referring to as being truly transformative. And it was this high altitude observatory called Hanle, and it's run by the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. So I decided that maybe it was an, you know, I would like to go and see this site, you know, try and understand why it is what it is. So I traveled to this space and I shot some footage there and I collected other kinds of material. And then it really was an exercise in trying to understand how astronomy and art or drawing because I work a lot with drawing tied together and what I realized was that metaphor becomes a really important tool to kind of bridge the gap between both these very different but very similar sorts of fields. So the medium is usually um, it's all dry so there's nothing wet on the wall. It's charcoal, dry pastels, color pencil, pencil and then two really cool new mediums which I discovered. One of them are these pan pastels that look like uh, eyeshadow actually, but they're really soft and amazing to apply. And the other thing is, so Dan who works in the exhibition department gave me these amazing like gilt creams which he uses for his frames. And they're amazing because basically the idea was now that it's a projected image on a drawing, where the projection hits the drawing, there is a possibility of some form of refraction or reflection. So this gilt cream is reflective and metallic. So the projector prop pops off it, which is really cool. So like I explained before, you know, when the work was on a monitor and on a TV, then it was, but it wasn't interacting. But when it's a projected image on a drawing, it's doing something completely different. So I'm positive. I know that this is the only way I'm going to show this work again. I feel like this is what Paths Unknown was always meant to be, you know, at this scale with projected videos, because it also does something different to your perspective when you're viewing it. And it's called Paths Unknown for a couple of reasons. One is that it suggests this whole idea of terra incognita, you know, landscapes that have not yet been explored. But then the other thing about Paths Unknown is the sense of continuity between disparate things. So the, there is the wall drawing behind, and then you've got a video which is of a very different landscape that is not actually directly related. But then Paths Unknown suggests that you've got different bits that come together. They create a sort of hybrid, new kind of landscape, which somehow then works because of the success of those hybrid parts. So I think for me what's important is when people come and see the work that they, that they experience wonder in some sense. Because I just think that it's a word that's lost currency a lot, not just in art but in life a little bit and that bothers me because I feel like wonder walks a really interesting line between the uncanny and awe or beautiful and horror both, you know, like and I think it's important to kind of reconnect with that sort of thing.